You are listening to Beats 100.5. The Lake Erie fishing forecast for the week is incredible. Get out and go fishing. It is a beautiful day here on Lake Erie, highs forecasted in the 70s today, and the lake is the the most beautiful blue this year. Turn up the dial and enjoy this beautiful day with us on its 100.5. Stay with us this week guys, Steve Cox and I head north to Lake Erie to get after some of those giant brown fish. One of the best trips of my life, just incredible timing. Stay tuned, we've got all those fish catches right here coming up. 20 fish over four pounds in two days in the old Ranger. What a trip. Stay tuned guys, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button, turn on notifications, hit me up with a comment down below, let me know what you think about my videos. But stay right here with us, we got a great one coming this week. So if you've been following my channel long, you've probably seen plenty of Lake Erie trips. It's probably my favorite place to go on earth, just to be honest. There was that time me and dad hit Peely just right when the Canadian smallmouth season was open. And hopefully after the COVID madness disappears, we can get back there at some point. You know, the Canadian portion of Lake Erie is some of the best smallmouth waters maybe in the country. So this trip ended up being a bed fishing trip. Wasn't our intentions. Uh, honestly thought we would go up and catch pre-spawn fish. But bed fishing was probably my least favorite way to catch a bass. Well, you know, aside from throwing a jig, of course. But after this trip, let's just say that it's amazing what a few fish catches will do for your confidence when it comes to bed fishing. So, you know, nonetheless, in the, in the few days I spent at Lake Erie on this trip, I think I improved a ton. So, you know, you're gonna see a lot of that in this video. So I typically start the first day of any trip, you know, I'm gonna run my electronics, I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna fish for a few minutes, you know, throw some moving baits, uh, spinner bait, you know, crank bait, some of my go-tos on this trip. And that's what we did, you know, we ran around, uh, you know, the, the first fish, if you follow me on Instagram, I caught, uh, we caught that on that Bandit 300 series. You can go check that out. I put a link to where you can pick that up over at LearnNet.com. But really, we, we struggled to get a lot of bites, and honestly, it became evident that this was a bed fishing deal because you could see them everywhere. You know, Lake Erie froze this year, so there's a lot less algae than usual. And that being the case, the water is just aqua blue. It's beautiful. And it made those beds really easy to see as long as the lake laid down. You know, that's one thing. The three days we were there, we had waves one foot or less. 
Keep reeling, keep a little bit of tension, slow as you can reel it. Even stop every now and then. Hey, y'all, that made me up. Hold up right here, Steve. Right there. Hold that hair up there. However, on this trip, it was just as clear as I've ever seen it. Made for some awesome fishing conditions. The weather was perfect. Just couldn't have had a better setup, honestly, mid-May than what we did on this trip. So one of the things that I think the ODNR has done an excellent job in Ohio of doing is managing Lake Erie. I've been going for about 25 years. And in those 25 years, you know, I've seen the smallmouth fishing really good. And then, you know, I've seen it where it's not so good. Honestly, we got to in the 2000s there, we didn't even want to go over because it had gotten pretty tough. And there were a few things going on. You know, one of those was, was the gobies, they felt like were eating the eggs off the nest. You know, the gobies are the little fish in Lake Erie now that came in through the ballasts of ships. And that's a whole nother story. But nonetheless, those gobies don't have a swim bladder and they'll pound those nests for those smallmouth eggs. So the ODNR put in a restriction that you're not allowed to keep smallmouth bass right now. It's entirely catch and release. Now I'm not gonna tell you that beds were everywhere because they weren't. There were a few locations where there were huge concentrations of beds and you know the lot of things at stake there I think number one is protection from the elements you know it being Lake Erie and you know number two it being the bottom hardness so you know when you found those bass beds you could move 20 yards and there'd be none but in that one concentration it was just one on top of the next and you probably saw some of those pictures I posted on my social media accounts but one of the things that was amazing is when you would catch a fish off of that nest, they would go almost immediately back to that nest. I mean, immediately back. Yeah, so it, it was amazing to, you know, to see that. We saw bass in every phase spawning. We saw you know, male and female. We saw you know, females laying eggs, you know, going in, working sideways. You know, you know the conditions that, that you probably know what spawning bass look like. But we saw fish in every phase of that spawn. So it was an unreal learning experience in that way. What a beautiful day here in Northern Ohio. Keep it locked right here on 100.5.
Look, Steve, I'm seeing them better than I've ever seen them before. Fish. I'm just seeing them better than I've ever seen them. I guess we've been doing it all week. Oop, jump out of The weather is heating up, the fish are biting, stay with us right here on 100.5 as we take you through your afternoon. for a bed under that lip. Look at that. You're gonna eat it. I can already tell. Wanna make it? I saw her right here. And I saw One of the things that, that we used to catch fish was the Yum Ned Crawl, okay? And that Ned Crawl, the good thing about the Ned Crawl is it's small. So, you know, those bass, I don't think you want to throw a huge bait in those beds right now because they're just going to pick that bait up and they're going to move that bait out of the bed. And what would happen is in some cases, those bass would grab that claw and take that out of the nest without getting, getting the hook. So one of the things that I did on those fish that I noticed doing that is I would pinch, you know, both claws off and then I would always hook those fish because they'd have to grab the, the body of that crawl. So that may be something you want to try in the future with bed fishing. I've heard of guys using crappie jigs in this way. I've heard of guys using a bunch of different lures in this way. So hit me up in the comments. What, what's one of your tricks on those pressured fish that are tough to catch? Okay, so one thing on the nest fish that we noticed, and you can see it here in the video footage that we've got, if that fish was stuck to that nest, stuck to that nest, you could catch that fish. Just about immediately, first, second, third cast, you'd catch that fish. If that fish swam off when it saw the boat or you got somewhat close, then you couldn't catch that fish. Now, what we would do is we would circle back and try to get a little further, you know, and, and, and sometimes we could catch those fish. You know, again, I'm an amateur bed fisherman, don't claim to be a professional bed fisherman. Like I said, going into this trip, it was my least favorite way to fish. But if I could give you one tip, I think would help your success buy a good pair of sunglasses. I wear those Oakley polarized lenses and, and I just think it's a difference maker. Uh, I've got my prescription in those lenses and I can see on a different level. You probably heard Steve in the video make several comments about it. You know, and, and I think those glasses are just critical to your success. So I haven't really made a lot of bed fishing videos, obviously, so hopefully this helped you. Maybe you picked up some tips along the way that can help you be more successful, maybe finding beds or catching fish off those beds. You know, as always, catch and release, guys. Put those back. 
Let them go, let them grow. Hey, good one. Go flipper, you're gonna miss. You know, on this area trip, it'd be hard to complain about a single thing. Uh, Lake Erie readily cooperates as far as weather goes and wind and, and all the variables that you face up there on a 21-foot bass boat. But nonetheless, this trip was absolutely perfect. So hopefully we get some more trips in this summer up to the big lake. But hit that like and subscribe button. Please turn on those notifications. And check out my posts over on the community tab. I've got some questions asking what you'd like, types of content you would like to see in the future. Let me know. Vote on those polls. How, what kind of stuff would you like to see in the future? Thanks for watching. Appreciate your time.